This episode is brought to you by Game Up Hard Hydration. Four great flavors. It's like your favorite sports drink and your favorite seltzer got together, had a baby. Dave, tell them about it. Oh, but it's way better. We got fruit punch. We got orange. We got lemon lime. We got grape. And it's only 110 calories, low carb. So enjoy any of those delicious flavor. And you don't have to even feel guilty about it. And come uh, listen to us. We are going to get to our newest comparison now because I was searching through the ones that were done recently. And sometimes I'll go with the most popular one. But this one for me, I thought was the most interesting because I was wondering who I would pick better in ring. Obviously, Steamboat has had a lot of great matches over the years. Uh Regal is known for that technical ability. What was the thought that made you kind of put these together? Well, these two had a rivalry over the WCW TV title. Uh, It was actually William Regal with the help of Sir William, who was Bill Dundee at the time, scored a victory over Steamboat and win his first major uh, title, the WCW TV title. And so they had a little feud there. And I just think... Thinking about that recently, they're fascinating because Regal is such a such a good wrestler, and he's such respected. Like we talked about the late uh, great Kevin Sullivan earlier in the show, you know that's William Regal, right? He's respected by everybody. But when you just look at the look at the history of great matches Ricky Steamboat has had, you know the two obvious ones are always Ric Flair and Randy Savage. But then you go further and you look at the matches he had with Regal here. You look at the matches he had with Rick Rude over the U.S. title. The matches he had with Steve Austin later on when he was stunning Steve Austin, whether it was the TV title or the U.S. title. And Steve has just had so many great feuds, so many great matches. I just thought it was interesting because I think a lot of people might think Regal's the better wrestler, and maybe in some ways he is, but... When you look at that list of matches Steamboat has had, I just think it puts him at the very top. Yeah, definitely. I was just listening to a WCEW podcast this week where they were talking about Steamboat and such such a great in-ring. I got to go back. I totally forgot these who had a match. I would still probably give the edge to Regal. While we're talking about Steamboat, did you get to see Dynamite this week? I did. What did you think of Ricky Steamboat on commentary during that main event? <laughs> He's not been the greatest commentator since joining. Uh, I don't want to join, but a few commentary spots I've seen him in in AEW. It just feels like he's a little lost out there sometimes. There's some pauses and he just doesn't seem uh, fluid and it seems noticeable. He did have a comment. I heard someone mention it too, where I forget what move it was, but Taz says, yeah, that hurts like the Dickens. And Ricky Steamboat said something about, if I may say, that's a shoot. And I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> like just, oh, the figure know. four. Yep. The figure four. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the big. And it was shoot. funny because in that moment, he kind of came alive and seemed more comfortable. But for yeah. a lot of it, he just didn't. And we're, I'm not picking on him. I'm just going from how good he was in the ring right. to just the talking on this. I thought it was noticeably right. bad. I wouldn't say it was Jim Ross in the Swerve Strickland interview bad. I thought Jim didn't look healthy. I don't know what his health is. I didn't hate that, actually, but I will say it was nowhere near comparable to any of the other sit-downs that Jim Ross has done in the past, which were all like his strong suit. Like Even if you weren't a fan of his commentary in AEW and thought this isn't a Jim Ross of old, those sit-downs always seem to deliver. I didn't feel like that here. I felt like they were on two different pages. And I was very surprised because Swerve is so hands-on with everything he does. And Jim has always done this so well. But to me, it just didn't click. I don't know, bad for me, but I wasn't, it was almost just kind of just there. Yeah, I when I saw it, I was like, I don't know if he should do much more on camera. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's a legend in the game, so he has the right to be involved however much he wants if he can if tony khan enjoys it but as a viewer i thought it was jarring those were just two things from AEW this week that uh didn't look the best and i'm not picking on it i was just no 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 no. i get it yeah it's interesting um i've heard up in my experience too i mean health wise given all the weight he's lost it wasn't a good look out there I understand that apparently he has diabetes at this point. I was reading. I don't know if it was a credible source, to be fair, but that he lost a lot of weight because he's trying to make some healthier choices. You know, I don't know. He's always seems to be battling something lately. 
So he might not have been in the best shape to even be out there currently. <laughs> you know, like maybe this is something where if he took some time away, it'd be better. Or maybe it's this time work in the backstage area too. 100%. After last week's show, the news came out that Brick Baker had been suspended from AEW from some backstage comments she had made. Do you have any opinion of that? And is there any other wrestling news you kind of want to end on? Because after seeing how it was handled on Dynamite this week, I almost felt like, is that some kind of a work to get a storyline going? I think they were just trying to include it because they got some bad press and they, they they try to include everything. It seems like, you know, to a fault sometimes. Is it a good look to have yet another locker room situation come out? No, I mean, they didn't directly talk about the thing with MJF. They just talked about the suspension and they tried to work it into his Mercedes. So you're dancing around a bit, but I didn't enjoy that either. Not so much even about the hint of suspension, uh, the talk about suspension. It was more, I thought Mercedes was flat. I thought there was a chance where she was actually trying to get them. She says, you can't chant DMD. Well, they didn't. So <laughs> that didn't work. Yeah. And then Tony's like, we got it right via satellite. <laughs> it's like, it just came off so incredibly flat. Um, I wasn't a fan. I guess what I'll talk about, I'll, I'll do two things. Uh, highlights of the week, uh, not counting SummerSlam and the big return of Roman Reigns. I'm just picking a couple of the shows we've seen. Uh, actually, I'll throw three. First, AEW, because it's not all fashion. Uh, that opening match with Kyle Fletcher and MJF. Kyle Fletcher, I'm loving his work. I thought he was really delivering big time here. Uh, obviously, they did the injury angle at the end and kind of beat him down. But I thought the match itself is really showing why Kyle Fletcher to me is elevating. And we could see this guy at the next level eventually. As far as other stuff on Raw, I just want to put over that ending with Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley working together against the new Judgment Day. Those guys got a huge ovation. I think it really does say something, especially with the 24 documentary about Damian Priest that just came out. That this could, in losing the title, he may actually get elevated. So good job on WWE with that. But the, the big news that we didn't really talk about, I thought, at a lot of shows, the kind of thing, one of your boys, Wes Lee, actually turned on the rascals the rascals lost tag title match to one of your favorite teams nathan fraser and uh, axiom and then afterwards wentz and uh, trey mcgill are trying to console wesley you know we'll get back we'll get back and then wesley kicks super kicks trey mcgill zach wentz is like that's your brother what are you doing trey kicks wentz in the balls and says you left me you left me alone and then proceeded to beat on both his uh, teammates and it got people talking people were genuinely upset about it and to me it really elevated trey mcgill as a great heel and god damn it joe you got me talking one more thing i want to say too and i want to agree bronson reed who after day after SummerSlam, this old school type angle where he basically gave two giant splashes off the top rope six of them i believe i counted to seth rollins and left Rollins coughing up blood. And this this almost felt like an old-school Mid-South angle to me. Like, this was that good, and I thought it really elevated Bronson Reed. Yeah, that Bronson Reed angle stuck out. I was upset about the Rascals angle at first because I was loving that yes. reunion. Same. And I know even privately I had talked to people about them winning that NXT Tag yep. Championship. I would have liked to see that. And bringing it over to Impact. But as time has gone on, I almost enjoy this a little more because maybe we can have some, you know, almost like the bloodline where you have the Rascals versus Wesley and whoever he brings on and have it almost some kind of rivalry like that. As we're talking, more things are coming up. Odyssey Jones joining the New Day, and it almost looking like Xavier Woods is kind of with it, but kind of not. It really was a good week this week for wrestling. If you haven't tried Game Up, then you are missing out. Imagine your favorite seltzer and your favorite sports drink had a baby, but it's way better than that. Each can is 110 calories, low carb, 4.9 ABV. It's a nice light drink that is not light on flavor. Game Up comes in fruit punch, orange, lemon, lime, and grape. Pick it up at drinkgameup.com or at your nearest liquor store.